Hi everybody. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about in this video are issues associated with crystalline solids. So up to this point in this unit we've talked about the intramolecular forces or the intraparticle forces that help hold liquids and solids together in ways that aren't there for obviously gas particles. So we're going to begin to try to quantify some of these effects of how uh, molecules or atoms or ions are held together in their solid state. Now we're not going to really be able to quantify too much when it comes to liquids because the structure of liquids is obviously very dynamic and very complex. But we can do some quantification for the properties associated with solids. And we're going to limit ourselves to talking about crystalline solids. There are two general categories of solids. There are crystalline solids and then there are amorphous solids. Amorphous solids have the molecules or atoms that make up the solid kind of slapped together in a sort of random fashion. Whereas crystalline solids are organized in a much more organized way, in a much more carefully constructed way. And so we're going to talk about crystalline solids and I'm going to need to use a few terms like lattice, unit cell, and we're eventually going to focus in on a particular type of unit cell, and that is the cubic unit cell. Now, when it comes to unit cells, what a unit cell is, is it's the simplest, most basic structure behind the crystalline solids lattice. A lattice is the entire extended array, the entire complex of molecules or ions or atoms, whatever it is that is being organized, extended out into all three directions. For example, here's a portion of a lattice for the ionic compound sodium chloride. Now, you can imagine that this could extend it this way and that way and this way in all three directions until we eventually extend the lattice so much that we actually have an amount of sodium chloride that we could hold in our hand and we could actually see. So this is sort of a partial lattice. Now buried inside this lattice is the simplest repeating unit of the lattice and that would be the unit cell. Now for sodium chloride in this structure it's a little bit hard to see but I do have another model of sodium chloride right here that you can see the lattice hopefully or excuse me the unit cell a little bit better. So we have chloride ions at the corners of what looks like a cube and then we have sodium ions stuck in between the different chloride ions. So this clearly has a cubic structure to it. This is one of the varieties of a cubic unit cell. Now there are about 14, I think it is, different types of unit cells that are out there. And they're shaped in uh, hexagonal ways, in ways that are cubic but then sort of slanted in something that's called a tetragonal unit cell. The particular names of the unit cells won't be our concern. But what we're going to want to know are the cubic unit cells. And there are three types of cubic unit cell. There are simple cubic unit cells, there are body-centered cubic unit cells, and there are face-centered cubic unit cells. So simple body and face-centered cubic unit cells. The next video is going to go into some more detail about the actual structures of those types of unit cells, and it will start to quantify the different issues we can look at when it comes to unit cells in the next video. Let me show you a few more samples or a few more models of some unit cells. Uh, let's take a look at uh, this one here. This is actually a model of a particular cubic unit cell for a particular material. Now it's kind of hard to figure out maybe what it is just by looking at it, but I'll give you a hint. Um, when I got engaged, I gave Mrs. Dr. Crane, uh, supposedly, one of these when we got engaged. And, yep, that's diamond. Okay, well, let's, we'll, we'll say it was diamond. Okay, we'll say it was diamond. So, uh, diamond is actually a cubic unit cell. Now, it's a little hard to see, but inside this unit cell, you can see some white bars in there. And inside that molecule, or inside this structure, you can see that cube that makes a cubic unit cell. Now, diamond is based off of what would be called a face-centered unit cell, and it's a little bit more complex than that. But in class, we'll take a closer look at this diamond cubic unit cell. 
Here's another unit cell. This one actually is not cubic, and I think you can see that right off the bat. Okay, you can see how that's got sort of a slant to it. Okay, this is the mineral calcite, also known as the simple salt of calcium carbonate, CaCO3. You can see it's got this tilt to it. Now, I'd like to show this model because, one, it's not cubic, so you get an idea as to the other possibilities that are out there. But this also does a great job of showing you that if I were to build this unit cell up and up and up and start to make a lattice, and eventually, if I have, let's say, an Avogadro's number of unit cells, you begin to see uh, an amount of material that, again, you could hold in your hand. So here's Calcite, the model. And pay attention on it, it's got that slant to it. Now, I'm going to show you an actual sample of calcite. And I'm going to come up to the camera a little closer to show this to you. So here's an actual sample of calcite. Okay? You see, it's got that sort of slanted look to it, just like the model did. Now, I'll turn it around, you can see it in a different direction. Right, so that's calcium carbonate. Very beautiful, very clear, which is kind of cool to see. So in this sample of calcite, you can see the effect as it builds up. So here's my model of calcite, and then here's my actual sample of calcite. You can see the fact that it's slanted at the unit cell level is ultimately depicted. Of course it has to be depicted eventually in the actual sample of calcite that we could hold in our hand. Alright, so that's a little bit about unit cells and in particular again we're going to focus in on cubic unit cells. The next video is going to go through the details of simple body-centered and face-centered cubic unit cells show you how they're structured at the unit cell level, and it's also going to talk about some of the calculations, some of the dimensions we could actually determine for the unit cell, and we'll actually start to be able to get into some uh, calculations associated with molar mass and determining Avogadro's number, and some other fairly straightforward unit cell-based calculations. We'll do that next time. For now, that's a little bit about cubic unit cells and crystalline solids.